And in uh, this part, Maria will present uh, her views about syntax, semantics, and mathematics. And uh, we will have some comments of Professor John Bollender. And after, we, I will open the dis for discussion, OK? So we, have, we will have more time so that you all can uh, make questions and receive some replies from Maria and maybe also from John. OK? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, well, uh, I think uh, yeah, I, uh, now I, I will explain the, syntax, uh, the syntactic features of my proposal, the semantic features, and the pragmatic features. I have to say that all uh, those features don't apply to the same kind of entity. So there is nothing at the end of the day that has, at the same time, syntactic, semantic, and uh, pragmatic features. So when I, when I uh, talk about uh, syntax, I'm talking about expressions in a language, parts of the linguistic uh, system that we use. When I talk about semantics, I want to think about uh, utterances, so these uh, syntactic expressions or expressions of, of a similar kind used by people, by real people, in real uh, exchanges. And the same when I talk about pragmatics, because I have said I can't trace a clear divide between, I mean, I'm a in some sense, I'm a contextualist, too. I think that uh, what is said, the semantic features of our uh, speech acts, are prompted by the context in which they are. So uh, uh, let's see. Uh, here, I have tried to describe the aims of the of these uh, disciplines, but the way in which I have characterized them is not something that I endorse. Just uh, I'm trying to be fair uh, to the tradition. So syntax, as I see it, describes a structure, a skeleton that is laid. So this is the traditional picture. This is not something that I that I endorse. So syntax uh, describes a, a structure, a skeleton, that is later fleshed out with semantic features. Expression with the syntactic and semantic features are tools that can be used in, communi in communicative actions. The idea is that pro uh, probably because of the, of the success of artificial languages, of contemporary lo modern logic, this has been the way in which we have understood uh, languages. And this is also that has been uh, supported by uh, mathematical ling uh, linguist, uh, ling sorry, mathematical linguistic. Uh, uh, in fact, in, in Spain, uh, probably here in, in Brazil is the same, we, te we, we don't teach. We try to teach logic beginning by syntax, which is impossible because logical relations are not established between syntactic items. But we, we begin with syntax. As we are very strong in our uh, syntactic <laughs> commitment. Then we try to uh, explain how to interpret these uh, uh, meaningless uh, signs and blah, blah. So this is the traditional way, the, the way in which things have, uh, have uh, been in the 20th century. And I think it's Wrong. It's wrong. So my position, which is pragmatist, as I have said, is this. I think rational, uh, rational behavior, of which linguistic behavior is a distinguished part, 
does not come into portions. This is cynicism. Human life is a reality that is continuous, and understanding it requires a global stance. Uh, a global stance. Uh, pragmatics is the foundational level of analysis. What I mean is that the, the general level, the basic level, is pragmatics. What we do in our uh, real communicative exchanges and semantics is an abstraction, is a theoretical proposal, and syntax is a much more abstract enterprise. But both semantics and syntax are theoretical proposals, way, ways in which we uh, advise others to understand our real practices. So I don't place them in, at the same level. So the order of the inquiry, when we, when we ask about the meaning of truth, the order of the inquiry should be beginning with uh, what speakers do with truth ascriptions, which are the minimal portions that are meaningful, according to the Hegelian principle of context, and then continue with the, the semantic features that permit the use of truth for the purposes studied in one, and then, if we are happy, looking for the formal features that give support to the semantic properties. Uh, this distinction in three parts is very artificial. Uh, there are parts which are artificially distinguished in the sense that if we engage in, in these three levels as, they, as if they were uh, different methodological uh, approaches, uh, what we should get at the end of the, of the inquiry is that we have to explain, so the, our, our semantic proposals have to explain the pragmatic uh, aspect. So the, uh, what this means is that, as Brandon says, semantics has to answer to pragmatics. So we are not free to make any, pro any semantic proposal whatsoever. We have to make a proposal. We are free. Uh, I mean, I'm not a realist about theories. We are free to make any kind of, pro of proposal. But you have to contrast your semantic proposal against the, the real uh, behaviors. So this is nothing that, that is uh, separated from, that they are not two separated levels. And the same with syntax. Syntax is a very abstract discipline. You have, I mean, explain how terms are combined. But you have to explain how terms are combined to help to, uh, to help to um, achieve the aims for which our uh, communicative exchanges are designed. So we, we don't have, in, in fact, we don't have three different levels. We have three different approaches to uh, the basic level, which is explaining our behaviors or exp explaining our intuitions. A semantic proposal cannot be against, that cannot be against our general intuitions about language. Well, this is uh, at, le at least my, my view. So, to understand how truth works in natural languages, one has to look at the actions performed by the speakers when they use truth ascriptions. If these ascriptions are the paradigm sentences in which truth appears, in them, somebody attributes truth to what somebody else has said or to propositions in a class. I, have, I said attributes. I, don't, I'm, I haven't said that truth is a predicate or that we predicate truth of an entity. I don't want to say it. I mean, I could say it because 
I have said that I'm not a realist about, about theory, so I could say we predicate truth and then define predicating in some way. But I don't want to do it because saying that truth is a property is something that, has, that doesn't help, doesn't help to understand. So, uh, truth ascription. Let's go with uh, a list of different kind of truth ascriptions. A feature of the proposal I'm making here is that it intends, or it, I mean, it attempts to explain the functioning of truth terms in any kind of truth ascriptions. And I have listed the kind of truth ascription that I think there are. There are. If you think of some, uh, some other example, which is not listed here, just uh, please uh, tell me. So the kinds are truth as uh, part of an operator. So the sentence is, it is true that Sevilla is a beautiful city, for instance. Truth as used uh, in a sentence in which they are quotation marks, quotation marks. Andalusia is bigger than Navarra is a true sentence. A third kind. When we apply truth to a theory, for instance, Darwin is a true picture of how life evolved on Earth. Another kind. He said nothing but the truth. Uh, the fifth kind, uh, he spoke truly, and then everything the Pope Francis says is true. I have said to offer examples of any, every, every type of, uh, of uh, truth ascription. It's curious that, uh, well, okay. I, I will say it now. So truth can appear in languages as a predicate, True, as a sentential operator, it is true that, as an adverb, truly, as a substantive, the truth, the grammatical form doesn't have any effect in the job performed by the notion. The syntactic perspective has to determine the status of terms and their, combinator, and their combinatorial uh, rules. The truth predicate works as a criminalizer. These are tacit and quiet dispotationalism. Uh, the, the intuition behind party and wine nationalism. The idea is when uh, if I if, when I take a, a syntactic approach to the notion of truth, I'm not talking about the features of the concept, but about the features of the terms that we use to represent the concept. Because syntax is always linked to, par to particular languages. So, uh, some of the proposals that uh, have had uh, a, better, a better reception in the 20th century just touch upon the notion or the terms syntactic aspect. For instance, uh, Quine's, uh, or well, it's not Tarski, in fact, but Tarski and Quine discotational approach. Tarski wasn't discotational in this sense, but, uh, and it's something curious because some people say, okay, yes, truth is a discotational device. Is it? Could be. But we, not, all, not all every kind of truth ascription that we use uh, includes quotation marks. And this is something quite obvious. Quotation marks are, 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 let's say, tool or strategy that we use in written languages. When we, we, when we try to convey the, the function of quotation marks in spoken language, we say something like that. We do that. Is it? 
reasonable to think that uh, a notion like truth is just a mechanism to remove quotation marks? I don't think so. I mean, this kind of, uh, this is a reductionist approach to truth. What I mean, a reductionist approach to truth. That is true, that sometimes truth terms work as mechanism to remove quotation marks. But we have to offer, but sh we should offer, a better explanation of the phenomenon. So let's go for a couple of uh, theoretical distinctions. Ima imagine that uh, we have a proposition, any kind of proposition. A proposition is the result of an assertive speech act. It's not a presentation mode. They can't re read it. Ah, sorry. No, it's just. Uh, yeah. how, where is it? Yeah, no, 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 it's here, here. Sorry, no, no, no. Uh, it's, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> okay. It's an hour. Now, I'm not talking about truth. I'm just explaining a situation. Imagine that we have a proposition. A proposition is the result. So some, something that appears, literally, something that is built up in an assertive act. So we assert something, and then by asserting something, we put forward a propositional content. Imagine that the propositional content is, so my, my daughter, Victoria, uh, says, I don't like Mondays. Then the propositional content put forward by Victoria is, Victoria doesn't like Mondays. Well, this is a proposition. What can we do with a proposition? <coughs> Typically, we can do two different kinds of things with a proposition. So there are two different kinds of acts that we uh, we can do relatively to a proposition which is uh, salient in a context. We can designate it, so we can say to other people, hey, look what she has said. So address uh, the audience attention toward this propositional content. This is one thing. Or we can accept this proposition and assert it uh, myself. I can assert it uh, myself. Uh, in, I can say, okay, I, I agree. So I repeat uh, the act of assertion. We were talking about syntax. Okay. If we think of of uh, words, using the metaphor, the toolbox, uh, we would accept that language is uh, like a box in which we have different instruments, different instruments to do different things. Then, if we want to refer or we, would, we want to point to a proposition in this case, we have to use the kind of linguistic tool which is appropriate for referring. And as I have said, the linguistic tool, which is the kind of expression which is designed, design is not the, the right word, but uh, which is used to referring, to signaling, to pointing to something, are uh, singular terms. So, if I want to signal, say, if I want to uh, to refer to a proposition, I have to use the appropriate tool to do it. So, what I have to to do is designate the proposition. How? 
One way of doing it is by converting the sentences, the, the sentences by means of which we have put forward this content into singular terms with the same reference, with, with the reference to that content. One means of doing it is using quotation marks. So quotation marks permit converting sentences, which are means by, by so which are tools by means of which we express propositions into singular terms, into names of that proposition. Uh, I have the, uh, in my book I have uh, distinguished between two kinds of two, two ways of referring to a proposition or two kinds of designate, uh, designations of propositions, and I have called them. Uh, exhibited and blind. We can refer to a proposition using an exhibited tool, a tool which allows us, in the in the very wording of the tool, allows allows us to recover the content which is being referring to. So quotation marks are this kind of transparent, let's say, exhibited ways of converting expressions in, uh, of propositions into designation of propositions. But we also have blind designations, designation that uh, having the, the, the status of a singular term, we are talking about syntax, so having the status of a singular term permit to refer to a content but that can't be this content can uh, this content can't be recovered just by li by listening to the designation because if I said what she said or what she said unless I have heard her I don't know what is the proposition I'm pointing at I'm pointing at so quotation Victoria does not like uh, Mondays. Is, a, is an exhibited designation of proposition. It's a tool for designating proposition. And this uh, uh, definite description, what Victoria said, is a singular term which uh, can be used to, uh, to refer to a content, to a propositional content. So the content of, Victor, uh, of this sentence uh, um, between quotation marks and the, and the content of this uh, definite description is the same, the first uh, proposition. And now, so we have, again, we have in natural languages mechanism, linguistic mechanism to form tools for designating propositions. But also we have, in natural languages, tools to undo this movement, tools to convert designation of propositions into uh, expression of propositions. Uh, and the syntactic uh, job that the truth predicates predicate, in this case is the truth, the, the grammatical truth predicate, performs is converting designation of propositions into expressions of propositions. This is its com combinatorial uh, job. So, if I attach is true to each one of these designation, uh, designation of propositions, what I have is an alternative way of saying the same thing we begin with. So if I say Victoria doesn't, uh, doesn't like Mondays, it's a true sentence, I'm just saying Victoria doesn't like Mondays. 
And if I say what Victoria says is true, I'm just saying Victoria doesn't like Mondays. Nothing else. So from a syntactic point of view, the truth predicate is a denominalizer. It's a tool to convert designation into expression of proposition. Uh, okay. The idea is now we could now we could uh, talk about uh, redundancy. One might say, okay, then truth is redundant because when you say what Victoria said is true, you haven't said anything else than that Victoria doesn't like Mandis. So we can dispense with truth in natural languages. Well, this is not true, but the idea is, this is a consequence of the way in which we look at this kind of, um, of um, expression. Christopher Williams had an example to show that from this kind of examples doesn't follow that truth is redundant in natural languages. If we begin, uh, imagine that we begin with the number seven, and then I say, okay, think of the double of seven, and then I say, and then and now think of the the half, the half of the double of seven. At the end, we have seven again. Or if we begin with Juan. And you say, okay, think of the father of Juan. And then, please think of the son of the father of Juan. At the end, you have Juan. And would this prove that the father of, the son of, the half or the double are redundant functions in natural languages? And the answer is, of course not. But we have this feeling that truth is redundant because, because we typically look at truth in examples like this one. Quotation marks, a sentence, and then truth. And in this, in this very uh, example, we are using two kinds of tools that neutralize each other. No wonder that at the end we say, okay, we have ended up with the same entity with which we began. But there is nothing wrong with the, with the notion of truth. The problem is, if you use first a nominalizer and then a denominalizer, it, yes, it, yeah, okay? So we haven't moved. We are exactly in the same uh, place, okay? Well, this is part of the explanation. So, uh, so from a syntactic point of view, from a syntactic point of view, we need tools. Sometimes, I think in, in the book I have used the, the, the term plug. So we, we have, uh, let's say, uh, complex tools with different plugs that you can, can put uh, together to convert a, a, an instrument in something else. Well, this is what, I, what we have in natural languages. So sometimes the truth predicate is used. So I have said, uh, if, if we, so we, we don't move if we use two different functions that neutralize each, each other. Of course not. So, so what we are saying is converting one tool in something else and then using another plug to undo the first move. Then we don't move. We are in the same uh, place. So, truth is syntactically the predicate. Is true is syntactically a mechanism to convert designations of propositions into expressions of them. This is this combinatorial function. In this sense, college is right in saying that the truth predicate is a denominalizer. And Quine is right in assuming that 
uh, truth is a disputational device. But not only that. So the syntactical explanation is true, but it's not the whole truth. So enough for the uh, syntactic uh, part. Do you want me to stop here, or should I go to the... Then just one, one, one sentence, one more sentence. What I mean is that it's uh, unfortunate that the most uh, uh, accepted or the, mo the most widely accepted theories of truth from the analytic part in the 20th century are just uh, theories that have focus on this quite trivial syntactic aspect. Of course, this is true, but truth is something much more complex. Okay, so. Are you using this? No. Okay. No, I'm just going to read. I don't need it. I'm just going to read. No. Okay, I'm going to like uh, read slowly, and and hopefully uh, a visual accompaniment won't uh, won't be uh, so much required. Um, now, um, in reflecting upon Professor Frappoli's uh, clear and carefully argued book, um, I want to discuss some uh, theoretical work in physics which appears to disagree with it. And I'm not assuming that the physics in question is solid. Uh, it could eventually be superseded by something better. Uh, I'm not suggesting that there's no alternative viewpoint in physics. And nor am I claiming that my understanding of this physics is anywhere close to being expert. Um, <laughs> the physics is highly technical, and I'm not a physicist. Uh, but the conflict between the scientific work and um, some of the theses in Professor Frappoli's book are evident enough that I feel the need to draw attention to the conflict. All right. Um, now, I want to begin by reflecting on a simple claim, namely that truth is unique. Now, uh, quoting uh, Professor Frappoli, um, Susan Hawk has expressed an obvious and quasi-trivial thesis, which is often neglected, that although there are multiple truths, Truth is unique. However, uh, there is work in physics which challenges this. Um, Christopher Isham, Andreas During, and uh, Jeremy Butterfield, who are physicists at Imperial College London, they argue that different kinds of truth correspond to different levels of description. So, so at a minimum, and this is at a minimum, uh, there are two forms of truth. There may be more, okay? but there are at least two forms. One truth for macro phenomena, uh, including the things we see around us, and another kind of truth for phenomena on the atomic level. On the atomic level, truth is a matter of degree. It can be 30% true that a particle is in one location while being 70% true that the same particle is in another location. So, um, when the particle is measured, it becomes, um, when the particle is measured, it becomes uh, uh, true, simply true, with no further qualification that the particle has some specifiable location. No. Um, for some physicists, truth 
on the macro level is classical in the sense of there being only um, uh, two or perhaps three truth values. But on the nanoscale level, truth corresponds to a continuum, there being shades of gray. Uh, for the atomic level, the collection of possible truth values is non-denumerably infinite, uh, since the number of percentages between 0 and 100 is non-denumerably infinite. When there's an interaction between the nano level and the macro level, as there would be in the case of measurement, then the type of truth corresponding to the macro level wins, and the nano level thereby exhibits classical truth in that instance. Um, macro truth and nano truth are not the same because they correspond to different types of measurement scale. So macro truth corresponds to a nominal scale, while nano truth corresponds to a ratio scale. So, uh, on the macro level, truth values correspond to categories. So a truth bearer falls into the category of true, or it falls into the category of false, or on some conceptions there might be a third category. Um, this is analogous to a nominal scale, where things are measured simply by being placed into categories. However, nanotruth corresponds to a ratio scale, such as the Kelvin scale, uh, truth being a matter of degree, there being an absolute zero of plain falsehood. And, um, unlike the Kelvin scale, there would also be a maximum, 100%. However, just as in a Kelvin scale, or the Kelvin scale, uh, owing to there being an absolute zero, one can speak of one temperature as being twice as great as another temperature. Um, for states of affairs on the nano level, one can speak of one truth bearer as being twice as true as another. In other words, one can speak of nano level truth in terms of ratios, uh, but one cannot speak of macro level truth in this way. Um, so we have here two claims which, in my opinion, raise problems for some of the views defended in the book, The Nature of Truth. Uh, one such claim is that truth is not unique. Uh, the other claim is that there's a kind of truth, the expression of which requires reference to ratios. Uh, these two claims do not fit so comfortably with Professor Fopoli's view that truth is a purely well, now I don't want to use the word structural or formal, but the truth is, is purely internal to language. Um, to quote from the book, the predicate is true is a contentless expression with a precise syntactic role to convert designations of propositions, that is singular terms, that denote propositions into complete sentences that express these propositions. Uh, it is in Horwich's felicitous term a denominalizer. Uh, for example, the definite description, the violent death of Archimedes, can be transformed into a complete sentence by adding the truth predicate, as in the violent death of Archimedes is true, and the truth operator is understood in similar terms. A simpler example might be one of the earlier examples, like uh, what she said is true, what she said is a definite description, so it's a singular term, right? What she said is true is uh, not a singular term, but uh, a sentence. Um, however, if Isham and his colleagues are correct, then the truth predicates for nano claims will contain ratios. For example, uh, the location of the particle at position x, y, z, t is 25% true, or the location of the particle at x, y, z, t is twice as true as the location of the particle at x prime, y, z, t. So the truth predicate here must be doing something more than denominalizing. It may indeed be denominalizing, but some additional work is being done by the numerical component. 
to make the point in terms of the classical redundancy theory, uh, the statement P is 25% true is clearly not equivalent to P. Um, the choice of truth predicates containing percentages reflects some quality of the nano level, which is not found on the, on the macro level. And here is at least one sort of case in which investigating the nature of truth does seem to throw some light on the external world. Uh, now, um, quoting from the book once again, truth is a higher order concept that does not represent any trait of the external world. This is hardly deniable, um, end of quote. Uh, but note that even if truth is language internal, and I was going to say formal, but I'll just say language internal, uh, different forms of language are nonetheless appropriate for different levels of description. In other words, something outside language acts as a constraint on the range of languages or notational systems which would be suitable for a given domain. In the case at issue, it is features corresponding to different levels of description which serve as such constraints. But then different forms of truth as embodied in these different forms of language at least track different features of the different levels of description. For example, there's some feature of the nanoscale level which makes one kind of language, and hence one kind of truth, necessary for describing phenomena on that level. And there's a feature of the macro level, which makes another kind of language, and hence another kind of truth, necessary for proper description of phenomena on that level. Um, it, it might even be helpful to make the point in terms of language games as quaint and old-fashioned as that may sound. Uh, different concepts of truth belong to different language games. A given concept of truth may be wholly internal to its language game. And let's assume for the sake of discussion that that is indeed the case. Even so, language games are not chosen arbitrarily. Different language games are appropriate for describing phenomena on different levels of scale. And this is because different levels of scale have different features, which make one language game more suitable than another. Hence, different kinds of truth do correspond to various features of reality. Truth and external reality are linked in a non-trivial way, even if the link is indirect. In fact, there's a colorful quote from Wittgenstein, which can be used to make the point, uh, quoting Wittgenstein, compare a concept with a style of painting. For is even our style of painting arbitrary? Can we choose one at pleasure, the Egyptian, for instance? Is it a mere question of pleasing and ugly? Uh, end of quote. These appear to be rhetorical questions, the answer consistently being no. Now, um, on the other hand, is it fair to be discussing physics at all? Uh, there are passages in the nature of truth which seem to suggest that Professor Frappoli's concern is more, more narrow, and perhaps she'd want to say that the use of language in quantum physics is not a concern, uh, she writes, ours is a theory of the meaning of the truth apparatus in natural languages, a philosophical theory that seeks to settle conceptual issues. She also states that the task of understanding truth is a task which only requires philosophical training. And uh, quoting again from uh, Professor Frappoli's book, defining truth, that is disclosing the meaning and role of truth terms within the boundaries of the philosophy of language, is a perfectly accomplishable task 
for which the philosopher of language with an average training is well equipped. Which seems to imply that to discuss physics might be going off topic. Okay? Um, but note the point recently made about language games. If one insists on investigating truth in terms of one type of language game alone, such as ordinary language, then one neglects the deeper question of what it is that's making that particular language game appropriate in the first place. Hence, the issues raised by the physicists do creep in, even for ordinary language. Uh, the language game of ordinary language, including its truth apparatus, is chosen for reasons external to the language game itself, namely the nature of entities and properties on the macro level, uh, but, as I said at the beginning, all of this is assuming one school of thought in modern physics. If that turns out to be wrong, then the objections vanish. So those are my comments. You're welcome. <laughs> well, I, <there's> <laughs> I should return to my seat. Oh, okay. <laughs> for some of the objections. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, um, about the, the idea that uh, truth uh, uh, doesn't represent features of, of the external world, please uh, let me uh, wait till tomorrow in which I'm going to explain expressivism, which is the, 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 the semantic feature that explains my position here. And about physics. Mm -hmm. the scope of my book mm -hmm. to cover also these uh, uh, um, assertions in, or in, in physics. So I'm not trying to say, okay, no, I'm not talking about that. Okay. So I'm just talking about the natural languages. What I'm saying is, what I think is that, I mean, I, I'm well prepared to accept that uh, technical languages or technical, uh, so highly sophisticated uh, language games can have non-standard uses of concepts, but I don't even think so in this case. Well, then, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to make myself understood, but uh, I, I, I still would like to I'm say, sorry, I okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to escape. So I, I, I mean, I, I still would, would like to say that truth is unique, in the following sense. I, I'm not. I don't know if I'm going to to be able to develop an argument right now. But the idea is that the sense in which I think that truth is unique. So we have to distinguish between meaning, the meaning of the notion and the criteria to apply it, to apply the notion to some content. So criteria might be very different. In, so for instance, if you want to, to assert something at a particular level of reality or, or a particular level of description, then probably criteria are different uh, from some other levels of description. But the role that truth performs is unique in the following sense. Place yourself in your favor level of, the, of description. Then, once you are there, if you are able at that level, if you, if you are allowed, if you are entitled to assert that P, at this, at this same level, 
you are entitled to assert that P is true. So, as I see it now, what I think is that the way in which, so, uh, the, the, this this uh, example that you ha you have used are very interested in, in in the in the sense that they uh, display the job performed by the notion of truth, which is talking about assertions and talking about propositions, but the different levels correspond to different levels of commitment <coughs> with some kind of assertions. So I can describe a phenomenon with in different levels, so uh, uh, so I, I mean I'm not a physicist. I mean I don't know, but the difference lies in the assertion. The difference lies in the description. Once you have described or assert, if you don't move from this level, the same en the same entitlements that allow you to assert the content, allow you to, uh, to attribute truth to them. So in this sense, I don't think that this is a, 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 a refutation. But, there are, uh, but you have pointed uh, to a, um, a much more difficult uh, kind of examples, which are the examples of probabilities. If you say proba probabilities, you say truth, that something is true at the 20% or or, or something is twice, uh, or some content is twice as true as some other. Oh. Okay, statistical, and yeah, okay. So the idea is statistical, perfect. Again, I haven't, so honestly, I haven't uh, thought of it. I haven't thought of this statistical use of the notion of truth, but now I have, I mean, I have been in touch with an approach to language that I don't master, which is experimental philosophy of language. I don't master the topic. But, I mean, I have been in some workshops and so, so, so I know that some people now are saying in the philosophy of language, in the experimental philosophy of language, that the criteria or the, or the requirements for somebody to assert a content or to say that he knows something are highly dependent on context in the following sense. If you, if you think, so imagine that I say, uh, okay, now, uh, uh, I mean, I'm going out for a walk with Sophia. And you say, are you sure? Of course I am. And you say, listen, if you are wrong, I don't know, your son will be abused and killed. <clears throat> well, uh, so wait a moment, uh, a minute. So then if you change the context, I, I, I could say, okay, I'm, I'm not completely sure, but let's say, I would say that uh, I'm sure at uh, 50%. So if it makes, I don't know, if it made sense to to attribute statistical values in this sense, I'm sure at the 30% of what I'm going to say now, if it made sense to attribute uh, this kind of numbers to acts of assertion, from my position, it would follow that the same sense it would make to attribute them to a truth ascription that have this content as their content. So the idea is when you use truth, so why why I say that truth that, that truth is unique? What is unique about truth is its uh, its link with assertion. And the, the links with assertion is constant. The same, if you, I mean, in the same degree in which you are allowed to assert a content, in this exact degree, you are allowed to apply truth to this content. So the relation is 
constant as I see it. So it did, but I mean, I haven't, I haven't really thought about this. Isn't it striking that there are people in physics who just, um, they, they really seem to believe that the work they're doing is they're, they're uncovering the nature of truth itself. And, and that's how they say it. That's well, actually how they say it. And so when you talk about philosophy or language, I'm thinking well, that's all you need to, to do the job. I'm thinking, well, those are like two really different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. But I have an answer to, also to this, uh, to this um, uh, approach. And it's the idea, something that I'm also working on, I'm also working in this topic too, which is the idea that uh, people think that truth has to do with representing how things are. It's the idea of correspondentism. And this is the problem that is, uh, uh, that it is debated when people uh, talk about uh, scientific realism and this kind of thing. And people think that realism, that the, the topic of realism is essentially linked with the topic of truth, and I think that truth is completely neutral uh, related to uh, the debate between realism and anti-realism. So sometimes when people say truth, this is it, for instance, they, are, they mean representation. The way in which lang language represents, I don't think that language represents anything, but uh, people feel that language represents. Uh, state of uh, state of affairs and so on. So I don't think that they are really talking about the notion of truth, but they are talking about correspondence between the structures and reality. So it would be yet another example of scientists saying that they're doing one thing, but they don't really know what they're doing. Which is, I mean, not that's not unreasonable. But scientists saying that they're doing one thing, but they're really doing something else. Um, Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, in, in other words, because of this, like um, this uh, philosophical assumptions that they're making, they're, they misunderstand some of the nature of their own work. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, philosophers all, um, also misunderstand yeah. the nature of their own work. Uh, work. So, I'm not saying that uh, we philosophers. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that because mm -hmm. I don't. I don't believe it, so I don't think that we philosophers have any kind of privileged point of view. Not at all. So, on the contrary, I'm trying to, to, to put my work at the user's level. So I'm not trying to look at the, at, at, at the way in which uh, language, uh, uh, the, 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 the language uh, works or something. Uh, from a from a high point of view, uh, no, I, I'm trying to 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 watch at what we we do when we use language. But I'm prepared to accept that the way in which we use we normal mm -hmm. speakers use the the notion of truth is different from the way in which it, some scientists use it. It it, it is ex know. it is explicitly correct that Christopher Isham is a realist because. He does have a philosophical background, and he calls himself a realist. So he's, he's <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't know it, but yeah. uh, it's something that uh, I mean, I I can I can uh, I can perceive. So uh, this is a mark of realism mm -hmm. when when scientists insist mm -hmm. in talking about truth. Mm -hmm. It is because they are talking about representation, and they talk about about realism. And, and they are engaged in this kind of metaphysical debate, which, I mean, is no, there's no problem. But, um, okay, I think that my position is, I think that my position is, is compatible with all these uh, quotations. It, it, I mean, I, I should develop my argument a little bit more, but I can't do it right now, I'm sorry. Yeah, can I go off? <clears throat>
So one way to go would be to, as you pointed out, in some states, it tends to try to offer some kind of error theory uh, to explain, you know, why it's intuitive for physicists to say that uh, some, some, uh, some propositions are and percent true. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you offer an alternative reading of these sentences, something like uh, the chances that P is true is then. You know, I, I can try to reinterpret their assertions uh, using, you know, the statistical concepts uh, by means of which I can offer maybe even a better explanation of, of what they're trying to say. I mean, it sounds kind of chauvinistic because uh, I'm saying to you what do you mean, right? Yeah. But uh, but there is another way I think that um, any 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 philosopher that that is trying to uh, you know explicate the concept of true in natural language as it is it's trying to do. Uh, another way to go would, would, would be to say, no, no, I, I'm not trying to correct these scientists. Uh, what I'm doing is I, I'm explicating a notion from natural language and, you know, not from some scientific context where the same word is used but to express a different concept with, you know, a different function. So, it all boils down to using the same word, but well, with different functions. That's why I talked about language. Right. I was, I was, I was going to say, well, one could say this was a different truth apparatus and the two different language games, and those are two different subject matters. But then I said, well, but that's still, there's still the question of why is one language game so much more suitable for one language than the other for the other? There's still something in the external world that, that they, that for a given domain, favors one truth apparatus over the other. So I, I, I was trying to respond to that. Oh, oh I, I will have to emphasize again that Aishan does have a philosophical background. He, he puts these things in very possible terms. He talks about like a, a spectrum of truth values. I mean, just very explicitly. Like, like, like from shade going from white to black and all shades of gray. I mean, he actually puts it that way in terms of truth values. Yeah, it sounds to me like confusion uh, uh, because, you know, whenever we talk about percentages and uh, grades, we, we seem to be making reference to our own epistemic state. Uh, okay, Vasilis had a question. May I? Yeah, no, I will, I will jump in here. I mean, this is, this is actually not as, not as easy to decipher because it's at the core of the issue of the, am I good? It's the problem of which interpretation of quantum mechanics uh, you're selecting. Well, I tried to make that clear at the beginning. I think yeah. this is not the only school of thought, but I'm saying, well, actually, I, I, I was going to say I, I was going to say this, and maybe I, I didn't apply it clearly enough. I just want to draw attention to something that I think deserves some attention. It's a little bit like saying, Oh, I, I see that like the, the, the flood waters are rising, and the other person says, "Oh, so you think that the flood's going to like carry my house away?" And I said, "Well, no, I, I don't know, but I, it, it might. So I'm going to tell you. I'm going to draw your attention to it. It's more like I, I just want to draw attention to something that seems relevant. Yeah, yeah, and and, and, and not that, not that I'm convinced that it's right. No, no, I, I was just saying so. Um, one school of um, one interpretation of quantum mechanics, maybe you can uh, you can can, uh, can be consistent with you saying that it's 45 percent. So when someone says, uh, when the scientist says, well, uh, the particle uh, is 45 percent true that the particle would be this one, then you can maybe say, well, it's 45 percent. You're 45 percent allowed to assert that the particle is there. But there are other interpretations of quantum mechanics where you cannot say. But it's very clear that what is going on in the, the ultimate reality level is the 45%, like the percentage is there. Yeah. But you know this stuff. No, no, but yeah, I know this stuff. But it, 
ça va être bien. C'est ça. Ici, nous sommes des problèmes. C'est des problèmes difficiles. Les plus difficiles à comprendre dans ce côté de la foule, c'est que n'a rien à voir avec comment le monde est. Et ce n'est pas une assertion anti-réaliste. Ce que je veux dire, c'est que les interprétations... I, I'm trying to clarify this, uh, this point tomorrow. And I'm not saying that truth is subjective and that I, I can assert whatever I want. No, I'm not saying that nothing uh, of this kind. But, but I want to stress, and maybe in these three days we can, um, uh, we, we will be able, maybe we will be able to sort out what exactly uh, is involved in this claim. But the idea is that the interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is strictly irrelevant for the meaning of the notion of truth. So that the that that uh, that what what there is out there is something that only can be expressed in, I don't know, probabilistic terms. I don't know. So that, that the probability of that the particle being there isn't, it has nothing to do with my state of mind. But it's something which is real. It's irrelevant for the meaning of truth. It could be relevant for the criteria that, that we need to 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 respect in order to make a correct assertion, but not with the meaning of truth. And this is the sense in which in which I say that truth. I would I don't know I don't remember if I have said in my in the book that truth is a well maybe I have I have said it is intralinguistic. But uh, but what I mean in fact is that it is intraconceptual. So it's, it's a concept that doesn't touch the world in the sense that they, its application conditions have, uh, have nothing to do with uh, physical pro the physical properties of our surroundings. It's a higher order concept. has something to do with our commitment. Good. Good point. Well, this point of the, the point brought in language thing. Good way to make it or not, is that even if, if one assumes it's interconceptual, there's still the question of which conceptual framework is best suited to this internal domain. Without which, any doubt, yeah. you are right. But I'm not that pluralistic. So I think that uh, the, 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 how can I say, the, uh, the metaphor of the language games is interesting in some sense. But I don't think that I mean I, I agree with you in that we can't we can't choose <laughs> every time or, 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 or it is always open to us to decide in which language game we are going to engage to engage. So I think that this is something I mean I, I, I think that this is a, a quite um, super in some sense probably superficial. Interpretation of this same intuition. It's not. I, I'm not saying nothing about your 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 uh, uh, objections. But sometimes I think that when some people have uh, drawn uh, the conclusion that from this uh, this idea of language games, that uh, we can do whatever we want about language. And I think that we have, and this is also an empirical claim. I think that we have a basic a basic set of concepts that depend on the kind of animals we are. And again, then we can engage in different language games. For instance, I can engage in the religious language game or in the uh, quantum mechanics language game. This is a different language game. But we, the people who are here, possess or belong to a, I mean, we, we, we cannot decide the, the kind of conceptual system we live in. So 
I haven't said we possess, but <laughs> we live in. So we have the kind of concept that we have because we are the kind of animal that, that, uh, that we are, because I, I have also converted to naturalism. There are more questions. I have. I, I want to say something, <laughs> Maria. Um, uh, I w when I I I said that I understood your intuitions, when I understood the the the, the sense of agreement that is uh, that this, that is part of your view of true. Uh, this implies uh, a kind of negation of metaphysical commitments. So, if you say that is true, when I say something is true, I am agreeing with with a proposition of a content of a proposition. Then, what you are saying. At the same time, you are saying you 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 don't want to discuss metaphysical issues because um, I'm when I say I agree with the content of a proposition, I'm not agreeing exactly with a relation, as you told uh, John and Vasilis between the proposition and something else. You are not doing that. But that's strange. No, because... Be so, because if I agree with the content of a proposition, uh, uh, and I say that using the predicate is true, I'm not just agreeing with the content. I am agreeing that this content has a kind of relation with something else. No, I mean uh, this is. I mean uh, this is a, a quite. Um, is that what was? Yeah, this is a is, quite. Uh, is that the point John wanted to stress? Yeah. But, so uh, it, it seems weak to say that you need just the agreement. Uh, to, to to explain the meaning of true, you, it seems that you need besides the agreement. The agreement isn't just with the content; it is a, the, the agreement that the content has a kind of relation with something, with a reality, or with a state of affairs, or with well, something. You, yeah, of course, but uh, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know if I have. Something prepared in this sense. There is, I uh, I have said to John that sometimes when 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 people, uh, talk about this kind of the truth or the, the several kinds, they are thinking of realism, of uh, uh, realism, but also of uh, representationalism, and it's the same in this case. So uh, the way in which you are um, uh, speaking is because you think that truth is correspondence. And truth is not correspondence, but I have to say, correspondence ha uh, has a trivial interpretation in which truth is correspondence. Of course, saying what it is, is the truth. If this is analytic. Something else is that I'm saying that there is a level of reality and a level of uh, expression and that there is a function that uh, map uh, maps one into the other. I'm not saying nothing of this kind. This is a metaphysical position, and you can have it. Uh, what I'm saying is just that when you say that something is true, not that you agree. It's not that you agree. It's not that you support. It's just that you are asserting it yourself. Full stop. So if you say something and I say what Sophia says is true, I'm just asserting it myself. And this means inheriting 
the commitments that you have accepted when you have accepted this content. Nothing else. Is true, uh, is truth correspondence? Okay, uh, uh, it depends. Imagine that I say, uh, when uh, can we say that the cat is on the mat? Okay, when we have a cat on a mat. Okay. And when are we allowed to say that Victoria is Juan's sister? Uh, well, we have Victoria and Juan and, and sister. Uh, do, I don't know. And how, or when are we allowed to say that I feel very happy here with you? Well, I, you, happy very, and where? <laughs> so, if I have to to, ex, uh, to express this, uh, to express this mm -hmm. in a correspondentist way, I I would say, okay, that I'm very happy here is true, if and only if I'm very happy here. Analytic. Have I just committed to an idea of some kind of mapping between some kind of metaphysical realm and some other kind of metaphysical realm? No, I'm not. So, correspondentism, what I have called the default correspondentism, is a trivial position. And it's our default position. Because the full correspondentism, and I think I have tried to explain it in my book, is just, an, is just analytic. So this kind of, uh, of uh, pair, uh, something is true uh, if and only if things are as it says, uh, it says they are, is just analytic, nothing else. On, on the uh, micro level, on the level, the correspondence uh, it's just occurred to me, and maybe, maybe I'm saying it prematurely, but it, it seems to me like it wouldn't even be true. It would, even, it, it wouldn't, it would not even be. It, it would not even be true. I mean, on on the on the on the atomic or subatomic level, it wouldn't be even be true because how would you say that? Like, it is seventy five percent true that the particle is here, if and only if. What? <laughs> it, it it actually it doesn't even seem analytic. It seems false. I think. It, but I, I think that supports truth pluralism. Like, wh like wh when it comes to our ordinary language, correspondence is analytically true, perhaps. But for this different conceptual framework, it's not even true. Correspondence is not even correct. Which just underlines that these are two different kinds of truth. You know, I, I think. Why? Why isn't it true? Because how would you even say it? It is 75% true that the particle is here, if and only if. The chances that the yeah, particle. Yeah, but it's not probability. No. <laughs> well. I mean, on, on this particular interpretation, it's not probability, right? That's so, just you know, probability. It's more like, like a mix of different states of affairs and different proportions or something like that. Yeah, I think so. Well. But one interpretation is imagine the world separating into. Four different worlds, and in three of them, the particle is there, and in one of them, it's not there. Well, that's seventy-five percent. But that's like a, I, I don't think that's any problem for at all. I don't think that's a problem. There are interpretations. Yeah, many. yeah but uh, let me say something about correspondence, which is very. I mean, I I, I will insist tomorrow or the other. But it, I, I have begun, I have, uh, begun me, my position today saying that truth is not one uh, on a kind. And uh, it's true. So Strawson says, well, Strawson and uh, all uh, presentationists says that, uh, so it is true, uh, well, Strawson doesn't say that this is a cross-sentence, but it explains it as a cross-sentence. So it is true. Is a sentence. Do we have any any other <coughs> sentences in natural languages? Yes, we have loads of them. For instance, that is or this is the important one. <coughs> it's a fact. It's a 
double sentence. It's, it's a fact. It's exactly the same thing, exactly the same kind of expression as it's true. Being a fact is exactly yes, but yes. So we yes. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we say. No, no. The idea is, uh, and this is something that Strosson explains. Imagine that I am, and that I am explaining the situation, the, uh, the crisis situation in Europe, and explain that uh, they are, we have a very high unemployment and that people uh, can't, uh, uh, I mean, can have a, a, a reasonable way of life, and that there are depressions, people are depressed, and blah blah blah. Uh, after having been 20 minutes talking about this situation, I, did, I say, because of this fact, I have decided to move to Brazil. Because of this fact, it's not because of something that I can touch. It's, this, is some, this is a content that I want to uh, 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 assume here. And this is I, I'm offering it as a I'm offering it as, as an explanation of what I'm saying uh, uh, afterwards. So the idea is the expression in natural languages and this I mean Vasilis is uh, uh, doesn't uh, doesn't agree, but this is a an empirical question. It's not that I say yes and he says no. No, we, we should look at the way in which we talk. And it is a fact, it's a sentence in the following sense. If somebody, uh, Sophia says, uh, whatever, uh, and I say, indeed, or it's a fact, or whatever, I'm just asserting myself the content she has accepted, nothing else. So, if I put together, it is it is a uh, true, if and only if it is a fact. I'm not expressing a deep metaphysical position. I'm just I'm just displaying a grammatical fact that can't be denied. Because it's trivial, it's analytic, and this, and this in part explains the uh, the appeal that uh, theories of correspondence have. Everybody wants to be a correspondentist. Yes, of course, because the the, the simplest formulation of correspondentism cannot be rejected. At the price of being empty, completely empty. So I can say, so I can use, it is true, exactly in the same context in which I can use it's a fact. Because both expressions have the same function in language. What is the, the standard understanding of it's a fact? That it's a fact refers or uh, represents a state of affairs, but again, same state of affairs is also empty because we can uh, it, it define state of affairs. I assure you that I'm very happy here. So it's a fact that I'm very happy here. And what what are the ingredients of this fact? Well, I, I, this is my position, at least. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, taking, I guess, uh, John's examples, yeah. in sci when scientists are uh, discussing about truth, this is, and they say, no, this is true, and the other say, no, no, this is true. Um, isn't there more in stake than than 
Imagine that I I agree with the content of what you're saying, or I am disagreeing. I I, I know you didn't like disagree and agree, but I am committing. You you told I am co inheriting the commit. I am committed also with the same content as you are. Of course. Or I'm not committed with the same content as you are. Imagine that, that as I did said, imagine that as I, as I did said, it's true that P is, and the other one says, no, it's not true. This is what you are saying. So yeah. there is something yeah. there uh, this is that, um, that allows one to say, yeah, I, it's true, and, and, and to the other, it's not true. What is the question here? The question is that if they say, one says, uh, P is true, and the other says, P is not true, they are just saying, I have reasons, or I think I have reasons to assert P, and the other says, no, you don't, or I don't have reasons to assert that P. Full stop. And does, does this have anything to do with how the world is? The answer is depending depending on P. If P is an empirical content, of course. The, the circumstances in which I'm allowed to assert that there is a computer on the table are those situations in which they are computers on tables. But I can apply true, uh, truth to the feelings I have for my children. And I can apply true uh, to uh, mathematical content. So if we say, yes, but your feelings and mathematical contents are also parts of the world, I would say, okay, in a, tri in a trivial sense, you are right. So the, the, this is why I say that it's a fact, it's just, it is true. So I'm not saying that we can, we can, uh, we can let's say, uh, concord the world we live in. I don't think so. What I'm saying is that we are constrained in our acts of assertion by the structure of our uh, surroundings. But truth uh, doesn't have anything, the meaning of truth doesn't have anything to do with the structure of reality or something like that. Epistemic criteria maybe have. I have one. Um. It's just that I'm puzzled about one one possible way to a paradox that could rise here. And I, I don't mean to say that this is a problem because some, some people always are comfortable with uh, paradoxes. But, uh, and maybe it's a silly point, but, uh, you know, when you say that, okay, so suppose Sophia says it's raining, right? She She says it's raining. And and I say what Sophia uh, Sophia says is true, and I, I want to point to the true follow value of of my assertion, not not Sophia's assertion. And then uh, when when I say what Sophia says is true, I, I'm making a truth ascription, right? This is a truth ascription for excellence. And and then when you say that. <clears throat> When I say this, I, I'm saying myself that it's raining. Um, I, I get puzzled because uh, when I say it's raining, I'm not making a truth ascription, right? And, and when I say what Sophia says is true, I am making a, a truth ascription, right? Isn't that a problem? I mean, this is connected with, with another worry, which would consist in saying that when I, the definite description of what Sophia says doesn't refer to a proposition, doesn't designate a proposition, it designates an utterance or some linguistic item like that. And, and this is coherent with 
a common phenomenon uh, uh, where, you know, so suppose now Sophia says uh, uh, female philosophers are underrepresented in Brazil. And then I say um, what Sophia said is that non men uh, philosophers are underrepresented in uh, Brazil. And she corrects me. She said, no, 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 this is not what I said. I said that women philosophers are underrepresented. So she's correcting me because when I use what she said, I'm designating her utterance, her, uh, the sentence she used, and not the proposition because purportedly these two sentences may express the, the same proposition, and yet she's still correcting me. Uh, you know, so it doesn't seem that the definite description what she said refers to to the proposition, right? Uh, uh, several things. Uh, the, the topic is much more complex than I have uh, ex explained here. Of course, I think I haven't. I, I don't remember if I have said it, but I do believe that what is said, the expression that is said. Mm. It's highly context dependent. Mm. It can refer to utterances, to sounds, to ways of saying things, to many things. But only if at the end there is a proposition, I can attribute truth to what is said. So if, if there is no proposition involved, truth cannot be used. But uh, 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 second, when you say that maybe you have misunderstood what Sophia has said, okay, uh, some uh, some speech acts are successful, mm -hmm. and some others are not. That's it. That has nothing to to do with the meaning of truth. You 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 uh, when you say what Sophia has said is true, you are you are you think that you are endorsing a content that hasn't, hasn't been put forward by Sophia. Mm. So this is a misfire, nothing else. Mm. And um, the first question where, something about the par, what kind of, uh, ah. That you can uh, ascribe the truth of I'm sorry, are you saying that she misfires when she corrects me about what no, she no, said? No, no. I am misfiring. Yes. Okay. You, I mean, uh, by an act of, of uh, uh, so the, yeah, yeah. I, I now I remember your question. Your question where if Sophia says it's raining, mm -hmm. it's just asserting, and when you say what Sophia says is true, you are ascribing truth. So right. it's not the same. Yeah. And, and I say, of course, it's not the same. Because I'm not defending that truth is redundant. It's not the same. But both acts have the same truth content. So both uh, both acts. So uh, <coughs> if uh, so, the, the proposition, which is the core of both acts, is the same. But you are something, but sorry, but you are doing something more than him. So you can endorse a content, you can support a content just by asserting it, or by endorsing it <coughs> from a different person, when, as when you use a truth ascription. So the content, the semantic content of both acts. It's the same, but you are doing something else when you ascribe truth. So I don't think that truth apparatus is idle in natural languages. I'm not saying that. I don't know if this answers your, well, your question. One could argue that this, it's not the same uh, content that I'm expressing in this to speech acts because in the in the second one I, I don't I don't say nothing about Sophia in the second one right I just say it's rainy and it may be true that 
that it's raining while it's false that what Sophia said is true. Right. But if, so. this is irrelevant. If you say oh. what Sophia says is mm. true, you are just saying it's raining. Maybe you are wrong. Well, this is your risk. But what you are saying is that it's raining. Nothing else. I think it's something else. Mm -hmm. From the former one, I can infer that Sophia said something. From the second one, I cannot infer this. Right? Mm -hmm. From the fact that Sophia's, what Sophia says is true, I can infer that Sophia said something. But from it's raining, I can't infer that Sophia said something. Yeah. This is right. This is why I don't say that truth is redundant. What I'm saying is that the commitment that you acquire when you, you make this kind of assertion are at some level the same as if you were yourself repeated. It's raining. So again, I, I'm not defending, not at all, that truth is redundant. So I think that uh, when you are engaged in a truth ascription, you do something else. You are saying something. And there are some inferences that we can draw from the fact that you have uh, made a truth ascription that can be inferred just from, the, from Sophia's ascription. I, I, I mean, I, I accept this. What I mean is that the semantic code, the proposition, uh, the, 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 the basic proposition I say the basic proposition just because there are so many kinds of propositions. I mean, the lexon is exactly the same. Yes. So some of the some some of the points of sorry, what's your name? Luis. Luis. Some of the points of Luis. So I let me just pick up on Luis, and then I'll I'll say something else. Two. So two things. Um. Um. My, it, it's uncomfortable to say that they have the same content, content, even if you say it's the basic content, and if you even if you go inferentialist for problems like uh, Luis mentioned about uh, in uh, other kinds uh, about inferences that one um, makes available, the other one doesn't. Like for example, that Sophia has said something, right? and I wanted to press also the other issue, which is that um, I might think that Sophia is God, and whatever she said is true. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't hear exactly what she said, mm -hmm. but uh, I want to say, oh yeah, what she said is true. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I don't want to say anything about really, uh, it, it, it depends on how you look at it. What I want to say is that it's something about Sophia and her properties and what she says. Um, I'm not asserting what that the fact that it's raining, I have no idea she even said that it's raining. Right? So in a sense, I am allowed to assert that what Sophia said is true, without that meaning that I, uh, I'm also allowed. To... Yes. And the second one, maybe I should no, just. No, but it, it, yeah. I, I don't want to forget. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, this, this one, um, so about uh, about so two, two things. You say uh, the, that you agree with Louis in that you can infer different things from one after that from the other. And the and the, the, the answer is of course a truth ascription is a second order act. So just because we are engaged in a truth ascription, we can assume that a first order uh, act of a or assertion has been done or proposed. So we can I mean uh, because of the uh, correction criteria of being engaged in a true description, we can draw some inferences that can't be drawn from a mere assertion. I completely agree. I'm not saying that truth is empty. What I'm saying is that the lexon, or call it as you prefer, I don't know, there is something there is something that the two acts have in common, in the same sense in which there is something in common between Luis and he. There is something in common. It is exactly the same thing, I don't know, I, I mean, but this is one thing. The other, the, the, 
generalization. This is something that probably I will explain tomorrow. Proforms, pro sentences are propositional variables, and variables is something that we need to uh, to make generalization in, gen sorry, in general. So we can't assert something from a whole class of entities without having some terms that cover them all. And if we want to say something about propositions, we have to have ways of referring or endorsing facts of propositions. So, for instance, if I say, uh, I don't know, uh, evo uh, theory of, uh, the theory of evolution. If I say the theory of evolution is true, I'm asserting the theory of evolution. And I can do it even though I don't know exactly which are which are all the propositions that follow from the theory of evolution. Maybe I'm wrong, but the kind of act I'm doing, I'm performing, is asserting an infinite part of propositions. This is one way in which we use truth with general content. There is another way, which is the classical example of prosententialism, and is that the truth apparatus provides a rule for endorsing. Uh, it's, a, it's a machine. It's an endorsing machine. If I say everything the Pope says is true, <laughs> I'm endorsing everything the Pope say, says. So maybe I don't know because he doesn't say anything yet, but I'm yet committed to whatever he says and whenever he says it. So don't don't say it. So if you say if you say everything the Pope says is true, you get committed with everything the Pope says, even if you don't know it. Of course you can retract this assertion because you you, you realize that you are you are wrong. But the meaning of your act is Asserting yourself, so assuming yourself, the content of his acts. So there is, I mean, the, the sense that you, you think that uh, Sophia is God. Me too. I, I think that Sophia is God. But if we say everything Sophia says is true, we get committed. So this is the meaning of our act. Sophia, you are God, so <laughs> you decide. <laughs> yeah, it follows. It follows from what you have said. Why did she say that what you're saying is false? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. The next one. So methodologically, uh, I comment. You want to go full track like this? But in in the in the way of describing the theory, you're using a very robust semantic notion, which is that of the proposition, mm -hmm. as well as other things like singular term, reference, that deal with content. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, why didn't you go full pragmatic and say, I'm not endorsing a proposition, I'm not you know, doing all this classical thing. Uh, a proposition is just an act, too. The content of an act, maybe. I mean, no, no. no. If you go full pragmatic, you can say there are no propositions. Right? It's all pragmatic, you just do things. But if I say what Sophia says is true, I'm, I, I'm just saying that. What she did, I want to do too, or something like that. It looks like you don't have to fix your cake and eat it too, and I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't think so, but uh, you are right. In, in, I mean, it's. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's something that, I mean, I, 
I wanted to do it because of the following reason. It's just because when somebody, not, not here, but uh, I mean, I, 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 have, I have worked with logicians for too long, so uh, I know, <laughs> and I have been one many years ago. So what uh, I'm, I'm recovering. Uh, what I mean is that uh, when when people say something is pragmatic, sometimes people think that uh, being pragmatist uh, requires you to be vague or imprecise or that you haven't uh, paid enough attention to phenomena and so on. And I don't, I mean, I'm not this kind of pragmatist. When I, when I say I'm pragmatist, I mean, I'm um, when I say I'm pragmatist, what I mean is just practices are the point of departure. Practices are the point of departure, full stop. And then we are allowed to elaborate our theories. Theories are, are artifacts that help us to understand the world and ourselves. Why I'm not allowed to elaborate an artifact? I'm a pragmatist because I don't think that artifacts are the thing in itself. No, I'm well aware that artifacts are artifacts, are models that we use to understand. So I don't put too, too much weight on them. <clears throat> but I don't want to be vague or imprecise just because I think that practices are the facts that we have to explain. So in this sense, the, the, the movement is conscious. So I, I stress, I'm a pragmatist, but wait. <laughs> now I'm, going, I'm going to explain my full theory uh, with all uh, its more in detail. Thank you very much. I have something to say, but I will say it tomorrow. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Maria. <laughs> and we, uh, I see you again tomorrow at uh, 30 past 10, 10 30 in the morning. Uh, we will have a lunch break, and then we will... Uh, Continue afternoon until uh, 3 p.m. Okay, so see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. No? Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.